It was an event that made history. After decades of disagreement, sometimes taking two countries to the brink of war again, a glimmer of diplomacy between the United States and North Korea. Step one, returning the remains of U.S. service members. But many mysteries linger in nearly five dozen boxes being examined now at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. Tonight, attending your side's Lex Gray with the process to match names with the missing. When you think about the, uh, the ethos of, of, of the soldiers leave nobody behind, that's been going on since World War II as this fullest possible accounting. That same ethos drives the research team here at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. A lot of people don't in the United States don't even realize to what extent the government does go to recover. Dr. Timothy McMahon leads the Department of Defense DNA operations where soldiers' remains come to be identified after they're recovered. In a nutshell, we will extract or pull the DNA out of it, we will purify it, um, and then we will test it using um, a combination of forensic techniques. You're seeing the process right here through the lab window. Scientists sand, decontaminate, and then test the remains. The most high-profile project right now, identifying the remains contained in 55 boxes sent from North Korea earlier this year. We were all excited. We hadn't received new remains really since 2007. The boxes went from South Korea to Hawaii and now here to this quiet lab in Dover. There's still a lot of work to be done. Exactly how much, McMahon won't say. How many believe to be reports do you have from the 55 so far? Um, I can't actually talk about that right yet. For the Korean War, McMahon's team has almost all the DNA samples they need on this end. From the original 8,100 missing service members um, from the Korean War, we have 92 percent covered. That means when remains come back, the researchers here can compare and match them to family samples. When I'm, you're collecting swabs from families who had never donated before and you listen to the stories of their loved ones, you can't help but be excited and hopeful. Even if scientists have only fragments to work with from the boxes, they have a good shot at identifying the soldier. We've gone from needing a, a five gram piece of bone down to needing a 0.25 grams to, to extract the DNA. Um, and how much is that? T show me yep, visually. So 0.25 <laughs> grams of bone is pretty much about the top of your pinky right here. To illustrate just how precise this science is, McMahon tells the story of a Vietnam pilot's remains eventually recovered overseas. Okay. Well, from that single tooth, we were able to get a DNA result and link it to a family reference. And so that tooth was returned to two sisters who were in their 90s. And to me, that's what this is about. No matter what is recovered, if we can give something back so the family knows that their loved one is on U.S. soil. McMahon knows that for Korean War soldiers, time is running out. Many of their direct family members are nearing the end of their lives, but that doesn't discourage him. And it's just as important to the next generation as the previous. That was 10 on your side's Lex Gray. Now tomorrow night on Wavy News 10 at 6, Lex will introduce us to the sister of an MIA soldier who is still searching for closure for her family.